Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Occasionally we find it necessary in dentistry to splint teeth that have been traumatically injured. Unfortunately, most of us don't have an in-depth knowledge of the technique of putting on orthodontic bands or the technique of using wire ligatures. Today, we'd like to demonstrate for you a technique splinting some teeth using uh, the composite resins. Now, the reason we're going to be splinting teeth uh, could be one of many. Uh, the tooth could have sustained a root fracture. Uh, it could have been avulsed and replanted or it could have been luxated and moved back into position. In all cases, it's necessary to splint these teeth to retain some stability and increase the chance of uh, a better prognosis in this case. Here's an x-ray of the tooth we're going to be splinting. This young man sustained a traumatic injury to the right side of his face, fractured the root on the right central incisor, and loosened the right lateral incisor. I'd like to show you the mobility of these teeth. Now, if we just pull Bob's lip back here, let's take a good look at the left central incisor, which was not involved in the injury. Of course, this is a normal, healthy, sound tooth and shows no mobility. The right central incisor has the root fracture, and you can see we have some mobility here. If we look at the lateral incisor, there's a little mobility associated with it, but not as much as the central. Now let's go back to the tray setup here that we're going to use. Actually, rather than make this a very tough procedure and demonstrate a number of instruments, the only thing that's really important is uh, to have a set of good pliers. Uh, Star makes some pliers like this, and uh, the wire. The wire is a number 22 by 28 rectangular orthodontic wire. Now, we'll start our procedure by bending the wire. Doesn't take any special orthodontic tools to do this. We just take and bend a nice curvature with the end of our thumbs. All right. Now, we have a nice curvature here. We'll take the wire cutters and cut off about what we think is the distance from the cuspid to the cuspid. With a set of hemostats, we'll take these up and try them in the mouth there. Okay, we have to make our curvature much smaller. All right, we'll just take and rebend these again. A little bit more curvature. Okay, I've got that a little bit smaller now. Let's try that again. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, my objective is to have the wire going from the mid-cuspid on one side to the mid-cuspid on the other side and with the wire touching or just about touching all the involved teeth. I think what I'll have to do is just snip off a little bit more on this end here. This one kind of goes distal to the cuspid a little bit. There. I think that'll be a little bit better. All right, very good. You can see the extent of the wire on both sides. That's just fine. Now we'll take and isolate the patient so we can do a pumice polish on these teeth to cleanse the labial surfaces. A slide ejector. And we'll just use a conventional polishing paste. 
It's our objective to have these teeth absolutely clean before we go on to the next step, which is etching the teeth with a resin etching system. Now, when we get to the tooth involved, the tooth that has a fractured root or a tooth that's been evolved, we have to be very careful that we don't produce any more trauma to the tooth than has already been done. So gently, we'll support that tooth and clean it. And the other one here that has been injured. And finally, the remaining cuspid. Now, we'll just rinse off these teeth. And dry them off real good. We'll now etch the teeth using a 50% uh, solution of phosphoric acid. Can you have the etching solution, please? Thank you. Now we'll apply the etching agent to the central portion of each tooth that we're going to place the band on. Now be careful when you're going through the etching procedure that you don't run the etching solution down into the interproximal. If you do, and you get some of the restorative material down there, it may be very difficult when it's time to take the band off to remove this material. Okay, we'll just etch the central portion of the tooth. Now, we'll let that stay on for about a minute and a half. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, let's go ahead and wash off the etching agent. All right, now we'll dry the teeth real good. Now you'll probably be able to see the central portion of these teeth uh, where the etching agent was placed is sort of a frosty white at this point in time. Now we'll take our wire again and for the last time test it to these teeth to make sure we have everything just where we want it. Now it's important at this point in time you don't try to hold that wire on with your fingers because if your fingers get against the teeth, you'll ruin the etched area. Now we'll go ahead and mix the etching agent. In this particular case, we're using J&J's acid glaze. And this is a system with uh, two liquids. We'll take a couple drops of each liquid, mix them together, and then apply the material to the tooth. The first thing we're going to do is put the agent on the left central incisor because the wire tends to touch this wire or touch this tooth much better. And we'll put some on the tooth. We'll wait a moment, let that start to set up. Now I'll place the wire in position and we'll place some more of the resin. Okay, now let's wait a little bit and let that set up. Once that's hard, then we can move on to all the remainder of the teeth and do the same. All right, now let's get the last tooth, which is the cuspid on the left-hand side. We've been mixing up the solution here for each tooth individually. This particular resin system requires uh, about a minute before it's set. And under the studio lights here, it's been setting up probably in about 30 seconds. You want to make sure there's sufficient bulk to cover the wire. And we also want to make sure that it's not getting into the interproximal. Now, if we find that the bulk is not sufficient, we can come back over the teeth here and over the wire and place an additional drop uh, in just a few minutes. I think we can take a real good look at the wire here in the patient's mouth while I'm waiting for the 
the resin to harden. You see we've spun it from mid-cuspid to mid-cuspid, trying to gain stability in the right lateral and right central incisor. The reason we're going to the cuspids is that if we went, say, just to the mid-lateral on this side, we might leave a sharp edge of acrylic uh, or of wire that might tend to irritate the patient's lip a little bit more. But if we tuck the ends of the wire back into the cuspid region, we find there's less irritation. All right. That looks real good. Let me demonstrate one other thing here. Remember the mobility we initially had? Well, here if I'm touching behind the left central, there's the right central again, the right lateral. You can see these teeth now are quite stable. We're going to bring Bob back in another two weeks, and we're going to do an electric pulp test on these teeth to see if they've retained their vitality. We'll also check the splint at that time. Four weeks after that, we'll bring back Bob back for a second time, again check the vitality, and at that point in time, decide whether or not we're going to remove the splint. We find that splinting, in most cases, uh, can be kept on for about a six-week period of time, and that's sufficient. But there's no magic in time. Uh, if we feel that it's necessary to keep him splinted longer, uh, we may keep him splinted for another four or six weeks. If in the intervening time, Bob develops any acute symptoms, uh, then we may have to intervene with endodontic treatment. When we finally get to the point where we're going to remove the splint, what we will do is disc off the acrylic resin uh, on top of the band, down to the band and remove the band itself, or the wire itself. After that, we'll take and disc the material right down to just near the enamel surface. And then with a sharp weedle stat or jock head or other sharp instrument, we can pry the remainder of the material off the teeth. As far as the etched surface is concerned, uh, that'll recalcify with the calcium deposits in the saliva, perhaps in another week or 10 days after that. What we've hoped to present this afternoon is one method of splinting some teeth that have been traumatically injured and in need of splinting. Uh, a method we hope that doesn't take any excess training or excess knowledge, as I said, of wiring or banding teeth. We'd like to demonstrate a different application, but of the same technique. Dr. Jacobs has isolated this patient with a rubber dam instead of a cotton roll application, as was seen in the previous patient. We're also going to use the NUVA system, which includes the composite, which is polymerized with the ultraviolet light. If we look at the x-ray, we can see that this patient has a very similar situation. He has a fractured root. It's our objective to stabilize the tooth during the period of healing and see if we can get some callus attachment here uh, between the root segment and the root itself. Now, Dr. Jacobs will first etch the teeth using the etching agents which come with the NUVA system. He again apply this to the central portion of each of the six anterior teeth. The difference with the NUVA system compared to the J&J &J system we just saw is that the NUVA system materials are a little bit more runny and you have to take care not to let these run into the interproximal spaces. An additional difference is once the wire is placed up against the teeth, we can apply comp the resin to all the teeth before we set up the polymerization. Now we're waiting for the etching agents to complete the etching process.
The etching procedure takes about a minute and a half. We'll rinse off the etching agents with water and then dry the teeth. And as we saw previously, the areas of, that are etched will show up as white chalky areas on the teeth. Now we'll place the NuvaSeal conditioner on the teeth. We'll place a dab of this conditioner in the central area of e each tooth where it's been previously etched. Dr. Jacobs will now place the UV light that comes with this kit on each tooth, allowing the conditioner to polymerize. After the application of the ultraviolet light to the teeth for about a minute and a half to preliminarize the resin, we're going to try in the wire just one more time just to make sure it fits. Now we're going to place the Nuva Fill part of the resin system on each tooth. And this will be placed over the area that was just previously conditioned. The wire will be tried on again, pushed into the resin. And ultraviolet light will be applied, polymerizing the filler, the last resin we just put on. And this will then attach the splint to the tooth. Dr. Jacobs has just finished the polymerization of the resin on each tooth, allowing the ultraviolet to light to remain in contact with each tooth for about a minute and a half. Today, we've demonstrated two different ways to stabilize traumatically injured teeth using the composite resins. Either of these methods produce a very acceptable results without the need for extensive training in banding teeth or putting on ligature wires. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu slash license.